This is Duke University. So our crucial measure, at least in this first set of papers, is food security. Now, food security can be delivered, food can be delivered by NGOs as well as by government, but it's unlikely to be delivered unless the government has actually provided some infrastructure in which that delivery can occur. We know from Amar Sen and from many other people um, that there is some kind of correlation between the quality of government and the quality of food security. Now, okay, so performance and effectiveness is part one. But that also, that in turn helps to create a sense that the government is trustworthy, that it can be relied on, that it keeps its promises, that it does what we expect it to. It raises a confidence in government. And that, when combined with some notion of procedural justice, which will obviously vary in time and place, will lead to what we're calling value-based legitimacy, which is all we are studying in the paper that I passed around to you. That is, um, the willingness to obey the laws or to defer to the obligations that are required. Am I in your way, Don? That's right. Yeah. Um, and in turn, that we hope that should lead or correlate with uh, actual compliance, with behavioral legitimacy. Though in the Afrobarometer survey, we really don't have a reported behavior that works very well for our purposes right now. So we're using some other kind of data in a paper that we're doing with Tom. That should then create a kind of virtuous circle, which will lead back to higher quality of performance and start the whole thing over. Now, I put leadership at the top there because I also think that the quality of leadership plays a role in all of this. And that's what I'm going to come back to at the end, because I can't get to that with this kind of data. But I can get to it with the other kind of data that I'm doing uh, in the union work. OK, so um, before I get to the actual data, let me say a few other things about legitimacy and compliance, just to create uh, the background for this. In our view, um, there, there can be multiple sources of legitimacy. So we're not saying this is the only kind of legitimacy, nor are we interested in all forms of legitimacy. So we know that legitimacy can come as a result of divine right. <coughs> it can come as a result of traditional authority. I mean, that's sounding like Weber here, right? Of course. Um, it can come as a result of charisma. And the kind of legitimacy that we're really interested in is the kind that is produced by a state that is approaching a legal, rational authority, that is trying to be that kind of bureaucratic state where its rules are non-arbitrary, um, it's not particularly corrupt, et cetera. So that's the kind of state we're interested in and the kind of legitimacy we're interested in. Uh, one of the things that came up at the Princeton talk, just to forestall um, the question, um, someone suggested, and I think this is a great idea because we might have the data for this, is that we can actually test how much is being done, work is being done by traditional authority with this data and how much is being done by the kind of performance and institutions of, state, of the state that meet the legal rational criteria. And I think we'll do that on the next run through with this paper. So there are multiple kinds of ways in which legitimacy might be produced. And we're really only interested in one of those. There are also multiple reasons why people might comply with law, right, or government demands. They can be coerced. That's the most straightforward way in which people are often gotten to comply. Or there can be some form of conformity or convention or habitual behavior. That's what we always do. That's what you do. You don't think about it very much. That could also be a source of compliance. There could be positive incentives that are very directly applied, selective incentives that are positive, such as bribery, that produce um, uh, compliance. Again, what we're particularly interested in trying to model here is compliance that is, activating, that is activating an obligation, that's based on an obligation, a sense that you ought to obey. That in turn 
in, in turn is produced by this reciprocal relationship that you think you're getting something and getting it delivered in the right way. Um, and that you see often that others, you have a sense of fairness about others in your community. So there might be a norm of fairness that operates that I don't want to um, make you a sucker to my free riding, right? That we're all going to comply. Or we're all going to dissent, can go the other way. In consent, dissent, and patriotism, I talk about the Anglophones and the Francophones, and they're very different um, attitudes towards their obligation to comply with the Canadian state when it asks for volunteers, let alone conscripts, for military service during both World War I and World War II. There are lots of cues that they're getting about what the norm is in their community. This is produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.